So last month I said I was going to watch all 500 anime on my plan to watch list. So, how did the first month of this long odyssey go? Well, well I certainly did watch some anime. For starters, this is the list of all the anime that I'm currently watching in this winter 2024 season. If you want to hear me talking just a teensy little bit more about all of these shows, uh, you can go and find my winter 2024 playlist. Of all these shows, I'm actually kind of vibing with Tomozaki Kun the most. Like, I've been waiting for every new episode like an addict. Like, uh, I've been tweaking in between episodes. Man, I need more. I need more. But speaking of Tomozaki Kun's, I also caught up on its OVAs from season one, since I haven't watched them while I watched season one when it finished airing. Other than that, I also caught up to Bungo Stray Dogs finally. I'm a huge fan of Bungo Stray Dogs. I'm even caught up to the manga, but I haven't watched season 4 and 5 and my boy am I so glad I did. Like you can see that this show is made by people who love the source material because there is a lot of details you can just like miss if you were to look them. For example, at the beginning of season 4, the first 2 or 3 episodes are focused on Rampo's and Fukuzawa's backstories and the whole backstory is in black and white while only red color is well, present. And that's because it's from Rampo's point of view. But every time in those moments when the rest of the world is black and white, when Fukuzawa thinks about something or it flashes back to something, a previous conversation, it's in full color because that's in Fukuzawa's point of view. And only when Fukuzawa shows the world to Rampo or whatever the fuck he tells him, hey bro, stop being a little bitch, only then does the world gain color and then like Rampo can see in full colorful spectrum. What I'm trying to say is, the show is a banger, like both of the seasons I enjoy thoroughly, but hey, other than that, it was February, the month of love. So what's new on my love front? I watched some romance anime. To be precise, there's a lot of OVAs I need to catch up to, so the next thing I watched is the Aoharu Raido OVAs, which just reminded me how much of a banger show that was, and it's criminal that it never got a season 2. I always say, Every good man is a good shoujo in his life. Maybe even two. The reason why I started to watch A Sign of Affection was because I watched Aroha Raido OVAs. So yeah, those two OVAs, that anime banger, I'm one a million, a billion, gajillion percent watching, reading the manga. And then on the other side of things, it's the My Little Monster OVA, which is also a pretty great show. Um, but it's not on the other side because it's like, <laughs> bad. No, it's actually a pretty good OVA anime as well, but it's on the other side because it's absolutely bad shit insane. But yeah, believe it or not, that's all the anime I watched this month. Well, it's better than nothing. But now, what about some manga I read? Oh, I'm so sorry. I haven't seen you there. I was reading Uzumaki by Junji Ito. Now, as for the manga I've been reading this month, here's the list of all the manga that I'm caught up with and that I'm following either weekly or monthly. Now, aside of that, I did watch a single manga that... Bitter Virgin, that's the manga that I've read this month and... It's quite a read. Honestly, I'm gonna try not to spoil you. The premise is that there's this guy who finds out the deepest, darkest secret of this other girl, and it's a love story between them. It's February, month of love, but that's the deepest, darkest secret kind of caught me off guard, so just, just watch it, just read it, read the first two chapters, <laughs> you will be uh, absolutely bamboozled like I was. But it's, it's a pretty good read, it, it, it kind of, it, it, it tries to balance like humor with some a, a really serious tone, sometimes it fails, Sometimes it does it really well. There's also this arc about when the main guy was supposed to become an uncle because his sister was pregnant. That was a pretty good arc. But the other day, I felt like it was a bit rushed. Like, you know, a bit rushed. It's also in all the shows, you know, as soon as the kids get together, that's all. But kind of like, the last chapter kind of hit me because it's, it's like they get together, they're like, oh, we'll probably break up in a few years, but they, what's important is now. So it was kind of like, oh man. Man, I, I kind of need to get into romance genre a bit more again. But other than that, uh, I haven't watched or read anything new. But there are some manga that are currently like coming out that I want to talk about because a lot of different stuff has been going on. So 
it each section when I'm gonna talk about a specific specific manga, just I'll put a timestamp down below so you can skip to it. So if you don't want to get spoiled, if you're not caught up. But other than that, the first thing is actually a manhwa called The Player Who Can't Level Up. It's basically like solo leveling, but it, in my opinion, it might be even better. Like, I think in terms of art, but I'm really wagging with the story. And just recently, we got the like it, the, the backstory of the world and who the main character is. So if you're, and I think it was super cool because it did recently revealed that there is like demons and there is Satan and there is his father who is, is a multiverse and it's stuff and it makes no sense that I'm talking about I just want to talk about the player who can't play one because it's such a cool manhwa that was kind of a useless section now that I think about it but they didn't even spoil anything but for the next, sec next section that is My Hero Academia there are some spoilers because uh, the final fight between Deku and Shigaraki is currently going on in the manga and I don't know, I've been kind of real like I was a huge My Hero Academia fan back in the day, then kind of died down, then kind of climbed back up again, and kind of started slowing down. But after the fight with Bakugo or All Might and All for One, and then Bakugo defeating All for One, and I was Deku and Shigaraki, it's a pretty cool fight. Like Deku is technically on the on his back leg, but he's but he's the one for all is so powerful that he can still like thing with Shigaraki that has like a bajillion quirks and they there was this huge, awesome moment. The reason why I'm putting it on this list is in the latest chapter, they were like coming at each other and screaming like, Ah, Deku! Ah, Shigaraki! And I was like, oh, that's so... Or Midori and Shigaraki. And I was like so freaking hype and I loved every second of it. And it's like, okay, it's my hero Academy is finally feeling like Deku and Shigaraki are fighting with their final battle. Because they kind of felt like their rivalry always... was like, at the beginning, it was nice to set up. But by the end it kind of felt, not rushed, kind of forced, if it makes sense. Oh yeah, but actually, speaking of backstories, Eden Zero. I don't know if anybody is reading Eden Zero or watching Eden Zero, but I am very protective of Eden Zero because I actually read Eden Zero from the first chapter. I remember in the first chapter, Drago was like, oh, that's the character from Fairy Tale. Let's see who this man is, because I have seen Red Fairy Tale, let's see this, and I kind of got hooked on it immediately. And I've been following it ever since, and currently we just got the backstory of Mother, who turns out that Mother is just Earth, you know, get it? Mother Earth, that's a clever writing right there, that like Earth, the planet that overdrive and became Mother. Um, and yeah, so it's like pretty cool because it's a pretty cool concept that like, oh, but she's Mother of all Ether, how can she be the mother for the past because Ether has blah 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 and it turns out that it, she just like gets eaten by Chronophage every now and then and now and again so she reverts back to the planet then, you know, becomes Mother again, gets eaten, blah 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 and that's how she like existed for eons and basically became Mother of all Ether uh, in the world and it was pretty cool and the plan how they like because Shiki gets a decision like who should he save mother or should he save friends and this dude says I'll save both <laughs> and he like just looks in the eyes says you know I got you both and actually comes up with a pretty good plan to like uh, get mother eaten by Chrono Force so she reverts back to her uh, earth days and then with the advanced technology save the earth and then the other is safe the friends are safe everybody is safe Pretty actually, pretty, pretty peak. I mean, a lot of manga in their like ending stages. I wonder what I'm gonna read and follow next. Speaking of manga that are in their ending stages, Jujutsu Kaisen. Um, I mean, honestly, it hasn't really felt like Jujutsu Kaisen has been slowly coming to an end, but it really is. Like, it, it really just recently sinked in for me that it's like, oh yeah, there's this is the final fight with Sukuna, and it's pretty insane. Like. Because, you know, the Shinjuku battle between Gojo, Satoru and Sukuna was set up, okay, the battle of the strongest. I thought, okay, that's gonna be a battle, it's gonna have a victory, then we're gonna go on. But no, immediately after Gojo, everybody said attacking Sukuna, which is a pretty good plan. And that was kind of a problem I had with that fight, that it just kind of ended abruptly, and then just in the last chapter only was it mentioned, last chapter of the fight, was it mentioned that, like, oh, Sukuna wasn't even going all out, he was holding back against Gojo, and it never like really sat well with me. But now looking back, looking at Sukuna as this final main villain, 
um, it, it kind of makes sense. Like this fight really like showcased that yeah, Sukuna is the peak of this verse. And he's basically like soloing his entire verse, which is insane. But yeah, it's it's really awesome. He, the motherfucker's even more memeable than Gojo. Like how like hidden pain and technique, pure bullshit, domain expansion, Gege Akutami Sensei. And can you see that I'm part of Obotami Kaisen? But yeah, that was all the manga that I've read. Now, if you would excuse me, I have to finish reading my Uzumaki by Junji Ito. <laughs> now, in terms of news, there are some anime news that I would actually like to talk about. For starters, the director of the Shang-Chi movie, the Marvel Shang-Chi, is set to direct a live-action Naruto movie. Now, of all the shonen, I think Naruto, either Naruto or Bleach, are like the ones that you can be, they are the easiest to like translate into live action because they like mostly do with throwing hands and stuff. I guess Jesus Kaisen can also be there. But the reason why I'm excited because if you watch Shang-Chi, you, you would see that like that is the man for a job. Like, because that, that, that movie is basically an anime. Like, I made a little short on it, but. That movie, like from the fighting choreography to the powers at the end, that doesn't feel like a Marvel. That feels like a really, really good live action anime adaptation. And for that to be Naruto, I personally am super excited. Yeah, you should be as well. But in some other sad news, literally as I am recording this today, Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball, has sadly passed away. That, that came as a shock. Literally, I woke up, saw the news, and was like, oh, what? He apparently passed away on March 1st. I will not even attempt to pronounce the illness he passed away from. And he had a quiet memorial, just like he wanted. And yeah, Kira Toriyama, Toriyama Sensei, thank you for everything. You've been a real legend. You've inspired so many people with your works. Me personally as well. Dragon Ball is, or Dragon Ball Z, is the main reason why I got into anime and why I am the person that I am today and why I am on this journey that I currently am. Through his characters he inspired so many people to better themselves and again me, my guy, friend, all of my friends who watch it, you, you can see influence from his <laughs> influence from him through his characters so it's yeah he deserves all the love and respect and he deserves to truly, truly rest in peace. Goodbye, Toriyama Sensei. But yeah, for the final part of this February update, let's see some merch that I bought. Come, please, please, don't be shy. I am absolutely delighted to update you that I bought absolutely nothing in February of 2024 because I'm a little broke boy. So yeah, that concludes this February plan to watch list update. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in another video. Stay strong, guys.